The Great Mafia Wars refer to a period of high-profile serial killings and thousands of homicides in the Mafia world due to conflicts between Mafia families over the control of territories and the lucrative heroin trade. It started with the outbreak of the First Mafia War in the early 1960s, during which different factions of the Mafia strove to alter the balance of power within the organization, then transitioned to the Second Mafia War in the late 1970s, during which a Mafia clan from the village of Corleone, known as the Corleonesi, sought to dominate the entire organization, and finally, the war against the state, whereby the Sicilian Mafia launched a campaign against the Italian state with the deliberate assassinations of judges, prosecutors, politicians, police officers, journalists, and any members of the civil society who sought to bring Mafia members to justice. The Great Mafia Wars ended with the Maxi Trial in 1986, during which 338 Mafia members were sentenced to a total of 2,665 years in prison, not counting the multiple life sentences given to Mafia bosses. The trial lasted six years and still today is considered the biggest trial in world history. Although the word mafia has become a generic term used to describe any organized crime network, the Sicilian Mafia, or Cosa Nostra, is very different from other criminal organizations in so many ways. In a previous video, titled 10 Things You Need to Know About the Sicilian Mafia, we explained the origin, purpose, modus operandi, initiation rituals, and the Ten Commandments of the Sicilian Mafia. If you haven't watched that video, we strongly suggest you check it out using the end screen that would appear towards the end of this video. Contrary to popular belief, the Sicilian Mafia, or Cosa Nostra, is not a single organization like a drug cartel. It is rather a confederation of about a hundred autonomous groups operating under one brand, the Mafia. The individual groups are referred to as clans, or families, and control demarcated territories. Mafia family members are not necessarily related by blood. The families are collectively governed by the Sicilian Mafia Commission, which comprises leading representative members of the various families. The family is headed by the Mafia boss, referred to as Il Capo, while the head of the commission is considered the supreme leader of the Sicilian Mafia, and is referred to as Il Capo de Capi, or the boss of bosses. Mafia families negotiate and control territories for racketeering, bootlegging, and other illegal activities, and cannot tolerate competition from other clans within their sphere of influence. A dispute between two clans over a territory often ends up involving other Mafia families and eventually the entire organization, thereby resulting in large-scale series of violent murders known as a Mafia War. The First Mafia War was the first major high-profile conflict between factions of Sicilian Mafia families. In February of 1962, the Chinesi family, headed by Cesare Manzella, the Greco family, headed by the Greco cousins, Salvatore di Giuseppe Greco and Salvatore di Pietro Greco, and the La Barbara's family, led by the La Barbara brothers, Salvatore La Barbara and Angelo La Barbara, collectively organized a drug shipment to the United States. Manzella then commissioned another mafia boss, Calcedonio de Pisa, who had American connections, to coordinate the shipment and safe delivery to the American buyers based in New York. Upon receipt of the shipment, the Americans claimed that some of the heroin was missing and paid a commensurately lower sum to what was agreed. De Pisa accused the Americans of defrauding him. While Manzella and the Greco cousins believed De Pisa, the La Barbara brothers accused De Pisa of stealing the missing heroin. As a result, De Pisa was summoned to appear before the Sicilian Mafia Commission, which at the time was headed by one of the Greco cousins, Salvatore di Giuseppe Greco. However, during the hearing, De Pisa convinced most of the commission members that he was innocent. When the commission ruled in his favor, the La Barbara brothers were outraged and declared war on the Grecos. On December 26, 1962, De Pisa, age 31, was shot dead in the streets of Palermo by an unknown gunman. The La Barbara brothers were the principal suspects. On January 17, 1963, Two weeks after the De Pisa murder, one of the La Barbara brothers, Salvatore La Barbara, disappeared and was never heard from again. Around the same time, the other brother, Angelo La Barbara, also disappeared, but reappeared two weeks later at a press conference in Milan. On May 25, 1963, Angelo was shot in Milan, but he survived. 
He was later arrested at a hospital while recovering from the gun wounds. On April 26, 1963, Cesare Manzella, who had sided with De Pisa and the Grecos and was suspected to be behind the La Barbara disappearance, was killed in a car bomb with pieces of his body stuck to a lemon tree a few yards away. With De Pisa and Manzella out of the way, the Grecos were the next target. On June 30, 1963, just one month after Manzella's murder, a car bomb exploded in Chiachuli, in the suburbs of Palermo killing seven police officers who had been sent to defuse it after the Palermo police received an anonymous phone call. The bomb was intended for Salvatore Di Giuseppe Greco, the head of the Sicilian Mafia Commission. The man believed to be behind the bombing was Pietro Toretta, a mafia boss and ally of the La Barbara brothers. Toretta was arrested in February 1964 and sentenced to 27 years in prison. During these times, other Mafia families who had either sided with the Grecos or the La Barbaras were victims of serial assassinations with so many non-Mafia members caught in the crossfire. But it was the death of the seven police officers in the Chiachuli massacre that triggered the Italian parliament to launch a crackdown on the Mafia, resulting in over 1,200 arrests and 117 convictions. The Sicilian Mafia Commission was dissolved, and its leader Salvatore Di Giuseppe Greco fled to Venezuela. The commission was only re-established in 1969, Mafia clans disbanded as many members went into hiding. The inactivity of the Mafia and legal expenses reduced most mafiosi to abject poverty. For 22 years, the misunderstanding over a heroin shipment was believed to have triggered the outbreak of the First Mafia War. However, in 1984, Tommaso Buscetta, a mafioso who had become a police informant, revealed the true perpetrators and the real motivation behind the serial assassinations during the First Mafia War. According to Buscetta, the Mafia boss Michele Cavatio, an old rival of De Pisa, had De Pisa killed, knowing that the heroin dispute would undoubtedly make the La Barbaras the prime suspects. Cavatio then orchestrated the two car bombs, killing Manzella in order to cover up for the De Pisa murder and attempting to eliminate Greco whose growing power at the Sicilian Mafia Commission was detrimental to the individual Mafia families. Cavatio's carefully planned scheme was backed by several Mafia families who resented the growing influence of the Commission. These revelations sent shockwaves throughout the Mafia society and sparked an outcry for revenge for the deaths, imprisonment, and exile of Mafia members as a result of the war. In 1969, the Sicilian Mafia Commission was re-established, and their first assignment was to settle scores with Cavatio. The commission set up a hit squad including Salvatore Toto Rina, who is probably the most violent mobster in Sicilian Mafia history, Bernardo Provenzano, a ruthless mobster of the Corleonesi Mafia family, Carlo Gero Bagarella, a notorious criminal, also a member of the Corleonesi clan, Emanuele Diagostino, a professional hitman of the Santa Maria de Gesù family, Gaetano Grado and Damiano Caruso, who were hitmen of the Riesi clan. The attack, which would later be referred to as Viale Lazio Massacre, occurred on December 10, 1969 at around 7.30 p.m. The hit squad disguised in police uniforms, with Beretta 38A submachine guns, invaded the office of the Moncada Construction Company on the Viale Lazio Street in Palermo, where Cavatio was holding a meeting with the company owners, all members of the Mafia. Toto Rina stayed in the car to supervise the operation, while the others led the attack. Caruso opened fire too early, destroying the advantage of surprise, causing the targets to counterattack, killing Bagarella, and severely wounding Caruso and Provenzano in the shootout that ensued. Cavatio and his men then ducked under a desk, playing dead. Provenzano tried to shoot Cavatio with his submachine gun, but had run out of bullets, so he pulled him from underneath the desk and knocked him unconscious with the butt, pulled out a pistol, and shot him dead. The attack lasted just a few minutes. 108 bullets were fired in the office. The attackers lost Calogero Bagarella, but killed Cavatio and three of his men. The Moncada brothers who survived the attack were later arrested in the hospital while getting treatment for their bullet wounds. They testified against their father, the supposed owner of the company. They provided details of their father's dealings with the mafia. Also, they confirmed that Cavatio was the real owner of the company. As a result, their father, Girolamo Moncada, was arrested. By September 1972, a total of 24 people were convicted in connection to the massacre. Bernardo Provenzano and Toto Rina escaped and were both sentenced in absentia to life in prison. They were only arrested 40 years later.
The 1950s and the 1960s were challenging years for the Cosa Nostra. However, the 1970s came with a rapid expansion in their racketeering businesses, mainly with the boom in cigarette smuggling. The mafia bosses in Sicily and Naples negotiated a joint monopoly over the shipment of contraband cigarettes into Naples. Also, by 1975, French authorities had shut down all the heroin refineries operated by Corsican mobsters in Marseille, prompting heroin traffickers to look onto Sicily for supply. As a result, the mafia set up new heroin refineries around Sicily and dominated heroin production and distribution both at home and abroad. Coincidentally, heroin addiction surged in the United States during that time. Members of the Sicilian Mafia were dispatched to control the distribution networks there. While in the US, heroin distribution was mainly through pizza places owned by members of the Italian-American Mafia, thereby automatically laundering the drug money as pizza profits. This was referred to as the Pizza Connection. The Cosa Nostra enjoyed a period of peace and prosperity until the outbreak of the Second Mafia War in the late 1970s. The Second Mafia War, also referred to as the Great Slaughter, was a period marked by a radical change in the balance of power within the Sicilian Mafia, resulting in thousands of homicides and the serial assassination of Mafia bosses. In addition to the violence within the Mafia itself, there was violence against the state, resulting in the death of top politicians, judges, prosecutors, and police chiefs. The instigators of the Second Mafia War were the Corleonesi, the Mafia clan in Corleone. Because they hailed from a small rural town, they were often marginalized by the powerful Mafia bosses in the urban Palermo, who referred to them as Ivedani, meaning the peasants. However, when Luciano Legio became the boss of the Corleonesi, after spraying his predecessor with machine gun bullets, his brutality and ambition drastically increased the power and prestige of the Corleonesi. Legio was particularly embittered against the domineering Palermo Mafia bosses, especially Stefano Bontade of the Santa Maria de Gesù family, Salvatore Inzerillo of the Paso de Rigano family, and Gaetano Badalamenti of the Cinesi family. After the rebirth of the Sicilian Mafia Commission in 1969, Bontade and Badalamenti were two of the three leaders chosen to head the commission. Legio happens to be the third. Legio initiated a campaign to dominate the Cosa Nostra and the flourishing heroin trade, mainly by forging a coalition with other Mafia clans against the powerful Palermo bosses. Legio mainly acted through his deputy Salvatore Toto Rina, as Legio himself was wanted by authorities for murder charges. Rina is considered one of the most ruthless mob bosses in the history of the Sicilian Mafia. Rina bribed other bosses with cash, converted members of different clans into the Corleonesi, and secretly recruited new members into their clan. By the mid-1970s, Rina had won over powerful allies and was dominating the commission. His most prominent allies were Giuseppe Calo, boss of Porto Nuova, Filippo Marchese, boss of Corso de Mie, Rosario Ricobono, boss of Partana Mondello, and Michele Greco, boss of the Greco clan. In 1978, Rina had Badalamenti expelled from the commission on trumped-up charges. His place was taken by Michele Greco, a staunch ally of the Corleonesi. That same year, Rino ordered the assassination of two rival bosses, Giuseppe de Cristina of the Riesi clan and Giuseppe Calderon of the Catania clan. He then replaced both men with his supporters. With this move, Bontade and Inzerillo were completely isolated and were at Rina's mercy. Rina is renowned for many things, being merciful is just not one of them. On April 23, 1981, Bontade died in a volley of machine gun bullets. Two weeks later, Inzario was killed in a crowded bar in a hail of bullets, alongside innocent bystanders. Shortly after their demise, most of their associates and blood relatives were either found dead or vanished without a trace. Badalamenti, whom Rina had expelled from the commission, only managed to escape by fleeing from Sicily. Between 1981 to 1983, there were over 400 mafia killings in Palermo alone, over 400 mafia killings in other Sicilian cities, and at least 160 people vanished. Rina and other Corleonesi mobsters became notorious for what is referred to as the Lupara Bianca, or the White Gun, whereby a person is killed and buried immediately without a trace. On November 30, 1982 alone, 12 members of the Mafia were murdered in Palermo in 12 separate incidents by Rina's death squad of hitmen. The leader of the death squad was Giuseppe Greco, nephew of Michele Greco, the boss of the Greco clan and Rina's trusted ally. Giuseppe Greco is alleged to have personally killed over 80 people on Rina's behalf, including Bontade and Inzario. 
The assassinations extended even across the Atlantic, with the murder of Inzerillo's brothers in New Jersey and Badalamenti's nephews in Germany. Throughout the war, the Italian police were in a perpetual state of confusion. They witnessed unprecedented levels of mass murders and serial assassinations without knowing what was going on. Furthermore, the Corleonesi did a good job spreading false information to keep the Italian police confused. For example, the police were convinced that Inzerillo was responsible for Montade's murder, but before they could arrest him, Inzerillo himself was killed two weeks later. The Corleonesi and their allies were overwhelmingly victorious in the Second Mafia War, suffering very few casualties. Though their victory has been attributed to the brutality of Rena, their privacy and secretiveness also played a significant role. For example, unlike other Mafia bosses who led very public lives, Legio, Rina, Provenzano, and other Corleonesi lived like fugitives. They were rarely seen by other members of the Mafia, let alone the general public. Also, they kept their alliances with other Mafia families a secret. That way, even their enemies could not tell who their allies were. This was the case of Emanuele D'Agostino, a Corleonesi rival who sought refuge at the home of Rosario Riccobono, Mafia boss of Partano Mondello, not knowing Riccobono was secretly in alliance with the Corleonesi. D'Agostino was never heard from again. Also, after the death of Bontade and Inzario, many of their associates sought refuge with other Corleonesi allies and vanished without a trace. By the mid-1980s, two Italian magistrates, Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino, launched a campaign against the Sicilian Mafia. The magistrates made a big breakthrough in December 1984 when they arrested Tommaso Buschetta, a mafioso who decided to collaborate with the police following the murder of almost his entire family by Rina. Buschetta's two sons vanished in September 1982, followed by the death of his brother, then his brother-in-law, and then his four nephews, all within a couple of weeks. For more than 45 days, Buschetta provided detailed information to the magistrates about the inner workings of the Cosa Nostra, the system of hierarchy, the Ten Commandments of the Mafia, the Sicilian Mafia Commission, the conflicts between the various clans, and the atrocities of the Corleonesi. For the first time, the Italian police had a clear understanding of what was really going on. It was Buschetta who revealed that the deaths of De Pisa and Manzella, which sparked the outbreak of the First Mafia War, were actually perpetrated by Cavatio and had nothing to do with the heroin shipment to New York. This information was unknown even to Rina and other Mafia bosses. Buschetta's testimony resulted in what would be known as the Maxi Trial, which until today is the largest trial in world history. It was held in a missile-proof bunker that could accommodate a thousand people and had a computerized system for archiving documents. 475 Mafia members were indicted, and 338 were sentenced to a total of 2,665 years, not including the multiple life sentences handed to each of the 19 Mafia bosses. The trial lasted six years, from January 10, 1986 to January 30, 1992. By this time, Rina and other Corleonesi leaders and hitmen were in hiding. They were each given multiple life sentences in absentia. During the trial, one of the convicted Mafia members, Salvatore Cancemi, wept and confessed to Buschetta that he had strangled two of Buschetta's sons to death. In response, Buschetta smiled and gave him a hug, saying, I forgive you, my friend, because I know what it means to be in the Mafia. You were only obeying orders. On May 23, 1992, just four months after the end of the trial, one of the magistrates, Giovanni Falcone, was killed in a car bomb, together with his wife and three police escorts. Two months later, the other magistrate, Paolo Borsellino, was killed in a similar bombing together with five police escorts. Both murders were carried out by one of Rina's hitmen, Giovanni Brusca. Rina reportedly threw a party, toasting both deaths with champagne. Also, Salvatore Lima, a top politician and judge who worked for the Mafia, was killed for failing to reverse the convictions. The Corleonesi under Rina also assassinated any government officials who were connected to the arrests and convictions. Amongst the victims were Police Captain Emanuele Basile, Police Chief Boris Giuliano, and Magistrate Rocco Cinici. They also murdered Cesare Terranova, who was President of the Regional Government in Sicily, Pio Latore, a member of the Italian Chamber of Deputy and leading member of the Anti-Mafia Commission, and Carlo Alberto Dalla Chiesa, a general in the Italian Army. Many other police officers, journalists, witnesses, and their relatives were killed throughout the trial. 
For example, former Mafia member Francesco Marino Manoia's mother, aunt, and sister were killed after he testified against Rina. The Corleonesi were overwhelmingly victorious in the Second Mafia War. Rina became the head of the Sicilian Mafia Commission and was the Capo de Capi, or Boss of Bosses. The Corleonesi and their allies greatly dominated the Sicilian Mafia and its heroin trade. After their overwhelming victory over their rivals, the Corleonesi sought to dispose of all their key allies. The objective was for the Corleonesi hegemony to completely take over the Sicilian Mafia and monopolize heroin trafficking in Italy. The first ally to be killed was Rosario Riccobono, together with over 20 of his associates who had betrayed most of their allies during the Second Mafia War after making a secret alliance with the Corleonesi. After that, they killed Filippo Marchese, a prominent member of Rina's death squad during the war. The Corleonesi strangled Marchese and dissolved his body in acid, just like many of those he killed on behalf of the Corleonesi. Then followed by Giuseppe Greco, who is alleged to have personally killed over 80 people on Rina's behalf, including Bontade and Inzorio. Greco was shot to death at his home on Rina's orders. Mario Prestefilippo, Vincenzo Puccio, and Agostino Marino Manoia, all members of Rina's death squad, were also murdered on Rina's order. These men were literally a killing machine for the Corleonesi during the Second Mafia War, with an average of about 100 murders per person. After the war, the Corleonesi bosses saw them as having outlived their usefulness and were a potential threat to the hegemony. Many other allies and hitmen met the same fate. Once again, the Italian police could not figure out the reason behind this new killing spree going on in the Mafia world until Francesco Marino Manoia, brother of one of the murdered hitmen, explained to the police that the Corleonesi bosses were eliminating their allies because they are of no further use and are perceived as potential threats. This was confirmed by Gaspare Mutolo, Giuseppe Marchese, and Leonardo Messina, who were former Corleonesi allies, now on the run for their lives. With the serial assassination of all former allies, Balduccio Di Maggio, one of Rina's close subordinates, fled Sicily and disclosed Rina's hiding place to the police. Rina was arrested on January 15, 1993, at Avia in Palermo. He had been a fugitive for 23 years. After his arrest, his lieutenants ordered multiple bomb attacks to warn Mafia members and members of the civil society not to turn state witnesses. On May 14, 1993, an assassination attempt was made on the life of Maurizio Constanzo, a television host who had expressed delight at Rina's arrest. Constanzo narrowly escaped with his life, but the blast injured 23 people on the streets of Rome. Two weeks later, another bomb exploded at the Torre dei Pulci, a public building in Florence, killing five people and severely wounding 33. Many other intimidation attacks were carried out in parks, art galleries, and churches, killing several people while others suffered serious injuries. These attacks were allegedly perpetrated by Rina's right-hand man, Leo Luca Bagarella. These notwithstanding, the state was resolved to bring Rina to justice. Rina was slammed with 26 life sentences and was to serve his entire imprisonment in solitary confinement. Over 125 million US dollars worth of his assets were confiscated, and his vast mansion in Palermo was transformed into a police station in 2015. By 2017, he was suffering from cancer and multiple other health problems. All appeals by his lawyers to have his sentence deferred to house arrest were rejected. Rina died on November 17, 2017, one day after his 87th birthday. After Rina's arrest in 1993, the leadership of the Mafia passed on to his right-hand man, Leo Luca Bagarella, but he too was arrested two years later. Another lieutenant of Rina's, Bernardo Provenzano, became the head of the Mafia but was also arrested just a year later, after 43 years in hiding. His successor is Messina Donato, who is presently the Capo de Capi, or boss of bosses in the Sicilian Mafia, and is one of the five most wanted people in the world today. Thank you for watching. If you have a video idea, why not leave a comment below? And if we make it, we'll give you a big shout out. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for more videos on crime stories, notorious outlaws, and historical scandals.